No doubt you have seen video footage of Tash Peterson. She is a vegan activist and I am very interested to talk to Tash about what is on her bio of if you're not vegan, you're an animal abuser. That is sort of the headline. And let's start there. Hi, Tash. Hi, thanks for having me on. Hey, it's a pleasure. You, you've you definitely made some noise in vegan activism, so good on you because I love anyone who's passionate about anything. Thanks so much. Um, let's start with what's on your bio because that is quite confronting, I think, for people who aren't vegans um, to say if you're not vegan, you're an animal abuser. Can you talk to us about where, I guess, you arrived at that statement? Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, it's very confrontational because most of us consider ourselves animal lovers. So when someone points out that if you're not vegan, you're an animal abuser, a lot of people get offended and shocked. And we're so disconnected from the horrific animal abuse that uh, people are contributing to if they're not vegan, that people just don't understand this concept. And you know, I've been an animal lover for my entire life, but I've only been vegan for just over four years now. And I just wish that I knew the truth because I deeply care about animals and I don't want to pay for their suffering. But the reality is when you're consuming animal products, for example, meat, dairy, eggs, honey, or wearing anything that comes from an animal, you're paying for not only rape, torture, abuse, enslavement, and of course, murder of these innocent individuals that want to live just like us. And so these are the things that you say are often hidden that we don't get to see. Yes, exactly. These industries thrive in secrecy and they spread misinformation saying that something humane happens in the slaughterhouse when, you know, in reality, that's an oxymoron. These animals are brutally murdered. And if you watch Australian documentaries like Dominion, which is available on YouTube, you'll see the horrors in these industries um, that's very hidden from the public eye. So for you, Tash, where you said you um, chose to become vegan four years ago. What was the catalyst for you to make that, you know, very definitive switch? Yeah, well, I actually went vegan overnight after watching a documentary called Food Choices and it just opened my eyes to the reality realities of these industries and the inherent cruelty specifically in the meat dairy and egg industries and I thought from that moment I'm going completely against my morals and values I don't want to be an animal abuser I don't want to be contributing to their suffering it's completely unnecessary we can thrive on a plant-based diet so I just did it overnight went out the next day and bought you know the soy milk all the vegan alternatives and I couldn't believe how easy I found it to be um And I feel a lot healthier and a lot better knowing that I'm not contributing to someone else's suffering anymore. Well, Tash, tell us about the, I mean, looking at what you've done, the videos that we've seen over the last couple of years, they are quite extreme. So you'll walk into restaurants or butchers with, I mean, there's a picture of you here with, uh, obviously that's a fake pig's head, but you covered in blood with a pig's head and you stand in front of the butcher and it's a very extreme way to go about it. What, what made you decide to go that extreme? It definitely appears extreme to the general public. And by the way, that actually was a real pig's head that I was holding. Where'd you get that? However, there, uh, I can't disclose that information, but I definitely did not buy the head. Um, so sponsored by (laughs) sponsored post. (laughs) It can appear to be extreme, but there's nothing more extreme than paying someone to murder an innocent being when it's unnecessary. There's nothing more extreme than the meat, dairy and egg industries. And I'm willing to do these outrageous sort of controversial acts if it's going to bring attention to the animal holocaust, which it definitely is because I am reaching literally tens of millions of people by doing, you know, these unique sort of protests. And it's going to hopefully put animal rights into public dialogue and uh, hopefully lead people to watch documentaries like Dominion and see the truth for themselves and then make that decision whether they want to participate in this Holocaust or not. So it does have the desired effect because there is a lot of people that go, uh, maybe there is a better way to get the point across, but you see it as a numbers game. The more people that see those videos, you might convince a few. 
Yes, exactly. This is how social change has worked throughout history. Disruptive activists uh, breaking unjust laws and doing sort of, yeah, disruption similar to what I'm doing is what is going to put animal rights into public dialogue. If I did, you know, a more subtle approach and was a little bit kinder about it, I wouldn't be receiving media attention mm. and people wouldn't be hearing the message. Do you get nervous? Because I've seen like a butcher jump over the counter and want to go, yeah. Like, do you get sort of a bit nervous going into those things? I definitely always feel a bit nervous before I go in and protest however in the moment it's just a very kind of surreal feeling I guess there's so much adrenaline pumping I never really feel nervous I just feel so confident because you know I've witnessed this animal cruelty and I know why I'm there and I'm willing to do anything for these non-human animals and be a voice for them because they can't speak for themselves. Um, I do think it's interesting, Tash, I'm studying psychology at the moment and, and one of my units is sustainability and I actually didn't know um, that how damaging animal agriculture is to our planet. And there's also, I completely hear you with defending non-human animals. I get that. But there's also a, a level of switching to a plant-based diet, which is good for our planet and our own sustainability. And there's that message out there too that is, I guess, less brutal for people to listen to. Have you thought about maybe communicating the positive effects of reducing you know, your meat consumption on our own sustainability in our planet? I guess that's definitely an important issue. However, as an animal rights activist, I just want to focus on the ethics of animal agriculture. Of course, I still create awareness about the impacts of animal agriculture because in a sense, it is interlinked with animal rights. For example, animal agriculture is the leading cause of wildlife extinction, deforestation, ocean dead zones. So, By consuming animal products, you are also paying for the mass murder of wildlife as well. So I have sort of integrated that message in my activism on a couple of occasions. However, yeah, as I said, I would prefer to focus on the ethics when I'm doing my activism. Do you have any protests planned at the moment? I don't have anything specifically planned at the moment. However, I'm here in Melbourne sort of... Uh, on my journey as a full-time activist now. So I'll just come up with random ideas and I'll go out the next day and do something. How do you make money being a full-time activist? Is that a paying gig? Well, I'm fortunate enough to have uh, multiple donations and support worldwide. I have a Patreon account. However, what's really saved me is making an OnlyFans account and that's allowed me to do full-time activism now. Wow. Like what, what sort of stuff are you posting on OnlyFans? Um, a lot of exclusive content, like in lingerie and bikinis and things that are a bit more exclusive. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I didn't know that that side of it was... I'm uh, so morally yeah. divided on that, Tash. No, like yeah. each to their own, but... <laughs> you do you. That's great. It's, it's very out. empowering. I feel very confident and empowered in my body from okay. doing so. Yeah, yeah. I think it's an awesome thing to do. Who do you get if on it's there? Like... allow me to be a voice for animals, then, you know, I'm willing to do that. And uh, is your audience all vegan lovers? Do, do you know? Uh, surprisingly not. There's a bit of a mixture in there. There's even some of my supposed haters in there. So it's a little bit interesting. That is. That's complex. Wow. Okay. Mm. All right. right. And uh, any (laughs) plans on coming to New South Wales anytime soon? Oh, definitely. I mean, I don't have anything specific planned, obviously, because of COVID and everything, but I'm wanting to hopefully go to every state in Australia this year and just disrupt every city. Is it true that you're banned from every licensed venue in WA? Yes, I am. I have a six-month ban. Wow. Okay. Jeez, you're really putting your body on the line in more ways than one. Uh, But, you know, you've got to to keep fighting that fight, I guess. Well, what's your hope out of all this? Like, what would you – would you love to see a meat-free world? Do you think we can ever even get to that point? Yes, my hope is for complete animal liberation. So the abolition of the meat, dairy and egg industries and animal entertainment industries, animal racing industries, anything that exploits animals, I'm hoping to be completely abolished. And I obviously it's very far away from that happening. 
However, I think at the same time, in the very near future, we're going to see massive change and more and more people are going vegan. We're seeing it become, you know, very close to mainstream um, and more people are going to be participating in direct action and that's what's going to be creating social change and hopefully seeing a vegan world in the very near future. Tash, thanks so much for your time. I mean, best of luck with that OnlyFans account. That really does blow my mind and no judgment at all. Like I'm not judging (laughs) you, but that's, I don't know, that really threw me. But look, if you can make a living doing that so that you can support your activism and like I said, I, I value anyone that has a voice loud enough and, you know, passionate enough as yours, good on you. Thank you so much for having me on and I really appreciate it.